Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Caden Kubler and welcome to Caden's Corner. We all expected this Bengals team to be a Super Bowl contender with the offensive roster that they had but we know that they also start slow most years, especially the last few years with Joe Burrow. But don't jump off the ship quite yet. I still believe that there's some hope for this team. Now they started 0-3. Everybody was hitting the panic button. People wanted Zach Taylor to get fired. People were questioning whether Joe Burrow was fully healthy or not. This defense could not stop a runny nose, and it put them in a really bad situation. Well, skip forward a few weeks. They're now 2-4, and four, gritted out a close win against the Giants. But I have some hope for this Bengals team, and there are a few reasons why. First of all, I believe this offense is one of the best in the NFL. No matter how bad this defense is, on the offensive side of the ball, the Bengals can stay in every single game. We saw them put up 38 points against the Ravens. I think if you put up 38 points as an NFL team, you should have no excuse to lose that game. The defense flat out did not do its job. They put up 34 points against the Panthers, 33 points against the Commanders, also in a loss. I think if you're putting up 30 points a game in the NFL, you should probably win 90% of the time. But that's not where the Bengals are at. They've lost a lot of close games to great teams. But the fact of the matter is that this is one of the best offenses in the entire NFL. Since T. Higgins was inserted back into this lineup, Jamar Chase has been unguardable. T. Higgins has just been this monster receiver that we know him to be. And this offense has really been fluid. Obviously, both of these guys sat out a lot of the offseason. They were both looking for big time deals and it kind of caused some confusion. They weren't all necessarily on the same page in the beginning. So that's why we didn't see this offensive explosion. But the offense is fully back. It is safe to say. And I think with Joe Burrow, he's not getting enough credit right now for the truly phenomenal season that he's having. Coming into this year, I predicted that the Bengals would make the Super Bowl and that Joe Burrow would win the MVP. I expected a massive bounce back season from him. And if you look at his numbers, he should probably be the leading candidate for the MVP, especially if this Bengals team was winning games. Obviously, you got to win games if you're going to be considered the MVP or be up in that running for it. But right now, he has almost 1,600 passing yards through six games. That's fifth in the entire NFL. He has 12 touchdowns to only two interceptions. He's tied for the second most passing touchdowns in the entire league. He has the second best QBR in the entire league. And Joe Burrow is currently on pace to have the best season of his entire career. Now this offense is so great. We know what they can do. But on the defensive side of the ball, they are really struggling. This front cannot stop the run, particularly because they haven't had Sheldon Rankins and B.J. Hill, two great interior defensive linemen. They've been banged up a little bit, but they haven't been able to stop the run. And in the passing game, they haven't been great. But it starts up front and it starts in the run game. Teams have been able to move this front around, run the ball however they want. That's how the Patriots won this week one game. That's how a lot of teams have been staying in it. We saw Lamar Jackson and the Bengals piece them apart. He threw for four touchdowns. But right now, looking at the metrics for the Cincinnati Bengals, they're inside of the top 10 for most points given up per game, inside of the top 10 for most yards given up per game, rushing yards per game. However you want to look at it, this Bengals team has been really, really bad on defense. And that's why they don't have more wins on the left column. Um, but I'm still holding out hope for this team. Like I mentioned, this Bengals team starts slow every single year. They went 1-3 a few seasons ago when they ended up turning it around and going to the AFC Championship where they lose on a game-winning field goal to Mahomes. On their Super Bowl year, they started 0-2. They've started slow a lot the last few years, and that's what everybody knows them to be. And obviously when you start 0-3, when you go to 1-4, it is very reasonable to hit the panic button, question whether your coaches should still be there, what changes do you have to make on offense. It especially doesn't look good for guys like T. Higgins and Jamar Chase who are both on contract years. But you can go through this first six-week stretch right now, and outside of their week one loss to the Patriots, they have been in every single game. They lost on a game winner to the Chiefs on the road. They played a heck of a game there. The next week against the Commanders, they lost by only five points. Jaden Daniels tore up this defense, but Washington is legit this year. And then two weeks later, in just a heartbreaking loss against the Ravens, had so many different opportunities to pull away from this game. They were up 10 points with like five minutes to go. And then they would go on to lose in overtime where the snap would get bobbled and McPherson would miss that field goal. And then they'd come down and the Ravens would win it in overtime. But the Bengals put up 38 points in this game and were pretty much dominating the entire time and should have won it. But that's how narrow the margin is for wins and losses in the NFL. 
The Bengals right now have about three different games where if one play goes differently, they're looking at a potential five in one year. But I am not panicking on this team. They're two and four, but this offense can truly contend with the best teams in the NFL. They have the Browns this week on the road. I believe they're around a touchdown favorite. They should take care of business here. They're going to have a decently tough game against the Eagles who can run the ball at a really high level. So they're going to have to slow down Saquon Barkley and this rushing attack with Jalen Hurts as well. They'll probably be full strength with A.J. Brown and Devonta Smith, but I think that the Bengals can get them there. And for Cincy, it's going to be all about riding the highs and lows of this year. They're there were a lot of lows to start the season. A lot of people were jumping off the ship, but I'm not going to. All this team needs to do is stay around 500, and at the end of the year when the schedule gets a lot easier, prevail and get to about 10 and 7. If this Bengals team can get to 10 and 7, I'm not expecting them to win the division with how good the Ravens have been. But if they can get to 10 and 7, I think they can absolutely squeak out a wild card spot and make it really interesting in the postseason. We know how great Joe Burrow is against Patrick Mahomes. He's the only active quarterback that's been able to beat him. Joe Burrow went on the road in Buffalo two years ago and knocked off Josh Allen. Joe Burrow is the only quarterback in the NFL that's been able to consistently beat these other great quarterbacks and I'm going to take him over every quarterback except for Patrick Mahomes in the months of January and February. Lamar Jackson, two-time MVP, phenomenal quarterback. I'm not taking him over Joe Burrow because he doesn't have that postseason success. We know that number nine is going to show up when it matters the most and I think this Bengals team is going to get really scary as the season heats up. This Bengals offense didn't have some crazy performance against the Giants last weekend, but they didn't need it. They were able to squeak out the win. The defense looked good. The Giants were banged up on offense, but if this defense can stay healthy, especially Sheldon Rankins and BJ Hill, two pivotal pieces on that interior defensive line, they're going to be able to slow down some of these rushing attacks and some of these teams that are looking at the game plan and saying, hey, if we can move these guys around, the Bengals cannot touch us no matter how good this offense is. So I'm telling you right now, don't jump off the ship for this Bengals team. I have ridden with them over the years with the highs and lows. I did it two years ago. I did it last year, and I'm staying consistent with Cincinnati. This is still one of the best offenses in the NFL. I think Joe Burrow right now is playing the best football of his career. And if Joe Burrow can stay healthy, can get the ball out quick, because this offensive line has not been consistent. If he can get the ball out quick to his playmakers, this offense is going to be up there. It's all dependent on the defense and what Lou Anarumu can do to scheme around some of the flaws that they have. I'm not panicking on this Bengals team. You shouldn't either. They're going to get back to 500 in two weeks. They're going to pick up a big time win against the Browns. And that's when everybody in the organization is going to start feeling it. They're going to know that they can get back to 500. They're going to pick up a massive win against the Eagles. They'll play the Raiders the week after that. That's when I'm expecting them to be five and four. Maybe they slip against the Ravens on the road the week after that. But at the end of the day, if you are talking to anybody within the Bengals and say after 10 weeks, after everything you've been through, you're going to be five and five, they would be thrilled with where they're at and this back half of the schedule. You're going to go on the road against the Chargers. I like them in that game. They're going to have the Steelers at home. I like them in that game. They're going to go on the road against the Cowboys. This is another very winnable game. On the road against the Titans, that's a win there. At home against the Browns, it's going to be a tough divisional game, but they're at home. I like them there. At home against the Broncos, I think they win this one. Let's say they lose to the Steelers finally. They get a loss there, but I think this Bengals team has a six-week period where they are going to win six games and I'm going to predict that their record is going to be 11 and six when it's all said and done. They're going to make the wild card and they are going to get really dangerous and really hot before the postseason starts. This will be the last time I tell you this season to not sleep on this Bengals team. I'm Caden Kubler and that's my take. <laughs>